Well, just one more time. Does the night look darkest before the dawn comes? Or does it turn completely black after it goes dark? Joining me to answer that is Steve Forbes, Forbes Media Chairman, Editor-in-Chief, and author of Inflation. Uh, Steve Forbes, I don't know uh, if you heard any of the Mike Pence interview, but he was he's saying these things can be changed. He's also kind of issuing a little bit of a warning to our friend, and I love the guy, but Senator Joe Manchin negotiating privately behind closed boards with Chuck Schumer about a possible trillion dollar spending package with $1.7 trillion in taxes. Um, Mr. Manchin would break my heart if he does that. So I ask you, Steve Forbes, is the night darkest before it turns to dawn or <laughs> things darkest before they turn completely black? What does Steve Forbes say? We're having well, fun today. The sun shall come up. The question is <laughs> when. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and, right. and that, uh, that, a lot of that is in the hands of the Federal Reserve. As for Senator Manchin, I'm not looking to Senator Sinema of Arizona. She doesn't like taxes, so maybe she'll end up uh, holding the line. And I think a lot of Democrats, if whatever they say publicly, are going to start to get queasy. Are you going to pass a big tax increase, another spending blowout, which people now associate with rising prices, when the economy is going into recession or a real slowdown? I mean, after all, this administration, you never know it from hearing them. The first quarter was down. Second quarter, best will be flat. Third and fourth quarters, uh, at best, flat. So where's this great prosperity? Sounds like prosperity's around the corner, a very far corner with these, with this crowd. A very far corner. You're probably right. So apparently, uh, Joe Biden met today with Larry Summers. Summers, of course, his probably his biggest Democratic critic about the big spending package 18 months ago, which caused inflation, which Summers did, in fact, along with others, uh, predict inflation would come. Do um, you think Biden would listen to Summers, take anything away? Because, again, you hear rumors about this Build Back Small package, which sounds like, I mean, a trillion dollars of spending is only small when you compare it to five or six trillion dollars in spending. Well, that's right. And I think uh, they brought Larry Summers in, if only for optics, uh, showing that he's listening to people trying to get the best advice possible. But there's no sign yet of a real policy change. Mm. And if he wanted to do that, which you would never do, certainly before the elections, is say, you know, that Keystone pipeline, that's not such a bad idea. Let's go forward with it. Steve Forbes, what's your quick take now? The Fed did what it did, plus 75 basis points last week, perhaps additional 75 basis points. But you're not happy with that, as I understand it. You and I have talked about this. That kind of dodges the question. Nobody knows what the right target rate is, actually. They're trying to sound like Paul Volcker as much as they can. But are you buying it? Do you see any shift in inflation expectations? What do you think the next move should be by the Fed? Well, what the Fed should do is start aggressively selling its bond portfolio, uh, free the bonds, and uh, <clears throat> in that way, get it back into the private sector. They show no signs of doing that. That would be more meaningful than interest rates. All that does is artificially raise the cost of things. That should be set by borrower and lender. So unfortunately, the Fed, the only way they know how to fight inflation, Larry, is crushing demand in the economy. And that's why I think we're facing the real dangers of a real downturn. Then the question becomes, what will the Fed do next when things start to hit the fan? We have an exchange rate crisis, perhaps brewing with Japan. A uh, big crisis there. Will the Fed panic when things start to go south? You know, um, former Federal Reserve Governor Robert Heller was on. He was a Reagan appointee many years ago uh, with Wayne Angel and Manley Johnson. And they gave us a fairly long period of price stability, including, I will add, for the most part, Alan Greenspan. But Heller is actually talking about a double dip, Steve. He's saying we're in a recession now. And then just kind of what you inferred, that the Fed, seeing a recession, will let up. That will lead towards even higher inflation and then an even worse, much worse recession later on. Have you thought about this double dip scenario, which is kind of scary, but, you know, then again, it's out there. It is out there. And the fact that it's out there is the real shocker. And I don't think uh, anyone's at the Federal Reserve paying attention to what's happening to the yen. You know, in Japan, they've uh, crazily, for years, put a limit of 0.25% on their 10-year bond, a quarter of a point. It's sacrosanct. 
That's about to get busted. You already see it in the exchange rate market. They said 125 yen to the dollar. That's the red line. Now it's 135. Uh, that's going to be breached in the next few months as they continue this crazy bond buying, which they can't forever. So we got a crisis brewing there. There's a black swan out there, whether it's Japan or something else. You got their own economy going down, especially before an election, the prospect of a presidential election. I think uh, the Fed is going to show uh, they have the backbone of an eclair. And probably the real problem is they just don't know really what to do other than crush demand. The backbone of an eclair. Hey, you know, that's a Forbes classic. That's what that is. That one's a Forbes <laughs> classic, the backbone of an eclair. Steve Forbes, we will talk soon. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Larry.